We don't do all that many follow-ups around here because, you know what, there's too much happening today to worry about what happened yesterday. But I usually leave some breadcrumbs that if people are really curious about what happened, they can go back and check the local papers to see if they followed up on it. And that, so I wasn't planning on doing anything more about the, the three black people who beat up the Cleveland limo driver and stole the limo and joy, took a joyride in it and put it on and streamed it live on Facebook. But then I just got off the phone with a member of law enforcement in Ohio. And she said, Colin, you got to hear the rest of the story. So let's 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 watch the rewatch the original story for two minutes, and then I'll read you the email I just got from law enforcement in Ohio. It was 18-year-olds Jesse Varner and Taiwan Philpot and 19-year-old Norman Henry partying inside a stolen limousine. Police say this video shows 18-year-olds Jesse Varner and Taiwan Philpot and 19-year-old Norman Henry partying inside a stolen limousine. Streaming the joyride live on Facebook one day after their crime. That's my first time being in Cleveland, so I really don't know where anything is or what's bad and everything. Brandon Lynch says he drove the limo from New Philadelphia and had just dropped his passengers at the Indians game last Thursday. He stopped for food at this McDonald's at Carnegie in East 30th. He says he was outside the limo when the suspects approached him on bicycle, demanding a ride. I kind of thought it was a joke because they look young. They look younger than me, so I was like laughing about it a little bit, and I was just like, I really can't take you guys in a limo through a drive through at all, or let them in the limo in general. That's when the National Guardsman says the men attacked at gunpoint, showing us the marks they left from choking and punching him. Police say the suspects got away in the limo. I haven't really been prepared for anything like that. I mean, even with like basic training and getting prepared for war, so to speak, I think it's not, uh, it's one of those things that caught you off guard. Brandon told police these suspects not only got away with the limo itself, but valuables inside, including his wallet, cell phone, and nearly $400 in cash. Hey! After the joyride, police say the suspects crashed the limo here near East 35th and Central. It's starting right about here. Owner John Passio says the Lincoln Town Car, similar to this one, has damage to its side and rear. They must have like hit some pole in the back. You gonna be able to fix it? Yeah, it, it is salvageable. All three suspects have criminal records. The victim wants them off the streets. I don't think it, anybody should be able to go around and do what they did. Okay, this came from just one of many law enforcement viewers of this channel and readers of my book in Ohio between uh, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Dayton, Columbus. Uh, there's quite a collection up there of uh, people who carry guns for a living, enforcing the law, that read the books and watch the videos. Anyway, here's what the, here's what the email said. Dear Colin, police just arrested these three fine youths, the ones who robbed the white limo driver. Well, they robbed someone else tonight and are now in jail. The one chocolate youth, Jesse Varner, police recognized from the video right away. And when they asked him, when they asked, when they asked him about it, he was so proud to admit it was him in the video. His mom and friends all came out of the woodwork to show their support by taunting police and acting the way they do. They were so pissed. These three, these three were caught. It was hilarious. Knowing our system, they'll be out of jail by the next morning. When these three young chocolate men ran, police caught up to Varner in the middle of the projects. So police had to walk him all the way back to the street where their cars were parked. While Varner's mom, along with her pride of friends and relatives and neighbors, they kept getting in the way of the police. They were all intoxicated and screaming for others to help, kept giving police the finger inches from their faces. They were telling Varner to fight the police. At one point, police heard someone say they were tired of this shit and were gonna be right back to take care of it. By the time police reached the street, there were 25 to 30 people following and watching in anger. 
Thankfully, at this point, several other cars pulled up and from other police agencies helped, including the Cuyahoga County Housing Authority Police. And uh, the other two guys were also caught. When that happened, then his mom, then Varner's mom wanted to know why so many cops were present, saying it wasn't fair. All these cops, just for a key. Amazing how they can make a situation so much more dangerous and yet say things like that to minimize it because he was just a kid. They were all over 18 years old and no use of force was used. Believe me, police would much rather let these rats go and not make the black kids angry. It's not really worth it because our system is so liberal with them. Our assembly line justice system enables them to repeat their actions. There is no accountability for the judges who released them. Anyway, thanks for your time and keep up the good work. Wow. I find that a lot of cops in this country are in a panic. Not because they can't do their jobs anymore, which they cannot, but they're in a panic because their neighborhoods, their friends, their family, the people they're supposed to be protecting, they're not aware of how bad it is, how, how, how ca I almost said random, how casual the violence is, how much the black people are directing hostility at cops and how cops are withdrawing. And guess what? If the, you know, if the, if the thin blue line disappears, what's going to separate you from this enormous level of black and white hostility? Nothing. We already see that in a lot of places. We already see that in a lot of chocolate cities. We're seeing it in Cleveland, Cincinnati, Philadelphia. It's a long list of hundreds and hundreds of cities where they use the term the Ferguson effect first time I ever used it I used the word depolicing I heard it from a cop in Chicago they're withdrawing all because people who run these cities don't want to make the black kids angry 